Welcome to lesson five of our Photoshop tutorial series. Um, today we talk about adjustment layers. So um, whenever you wanted to adjust an image in Photoshop, uh, you can do it the proper way or you can do it um, the wrong way. Let's start uh, by introducing the adjustment layers. So I'm opening uh, an image and the first thing that I would like to do is um, take the image off the background layer and I am also using a rectangular selection tool to select half of the image. It will snap to the center and I'm going to use a Control X and Control V. So basically what I did is I just uh, split up the image and uh, have it on two different layers. So I use Control X first to cut out half of the image and then paste it in the half again and brought it back to its original position. So now I have uh, the whole image on two different layers, uh, just for demonstration purposes, of course. And now here's the qu here is um, what I'm trying to do. Whenever you wanted to adjust an image, there's a series of tools that you will find up here under image adjustments. So adjusting the brightness and the contrast, or the, I'm just look, looking for a view, the exposure, also something to do with brightness, the curves with contrast with brightness, colors, uh, different filters, and so on and so on. The big disadvantage of using those adjustments, and I'm quickly showing you something. For example, I'm gonna use an adjustment, exposure, and I'm gonna set the exposure to brighter, way brighter. So the first, if I now hit OK, you can see that the, the, the brightness was, of course, applied only to the layer that I had selected. That was my layer one. Now if you come and say, but the adjustment is too much, there is no way to adjust it later on, bring down the exposure a little bit so it's not that bright. So I can do, of course, undo, but if I save my Photoshop image and I'll come back tomorrow and I would like to change the adjustment that I did, it's not possible. So that's why, uh, let me quickly do undo. That's why I would like to start today's lesson with something, please avoid all the adjustments here in this in this uh, drop in this menu. So, to, if you want to adjust something in your image, brightness, color, uh, contrast, and something like this, do not do it with adjustments and here because it's not you cannot change it later. You cannot undo it once it's applied to your image. So that's why we usually adjust our layers by using so-called adjustment layers and that is in a layer that you place inside your layer inside your layer stack and for example i would like to use the same one again the the exposure so i'm gonna place here it is an adjustment layer uh, it's called create fill or adjustment layer and i'm going to use the same one an adjustment layer for exposure and the, expo the adjustment layer for exposure has its properties up here. And remember, what I did is I just took the exposure and bring it way up. So first of all, the adjustment layer that I have placed inside my layer stack usually adjusts all the layer below. So everything is, that is below the exposure will be adjusted, will be brightened up. I can prove that by simply taking the adjustment layer and put it between the two layers and then it will only adjust the one that's below and that's the one on the left side. So I'll bring it back up again so it adjusts both layers. If I don't want it, if I just want to adjust it one layer and the one will be the one on top, then it, here's a button that says um, when you hold your mouse, when it's, when it's turned on, it only adjusts one layer below when it's turned off it adjusts all layers. So you can limit the effect of an adjustment layer either to one layer below or to all layers below. Of course, you can also use uh, folders, place everything inside a folder and then uh, it will adjust the whole folder and so on. So uh, that is the button for adjusting only one or all of them below. But what's more important even is, first of all, I can turn the effect on and off simply by 
uh, turning uh, the, uh, the, the, the visibility of the layer, of the adjustment layer, on and off. I can also ch uh, change the parameters later. If you say the exposure was fine, but just too much, then I can just click here on this one, and it will open the properties. Remember, if you don't have the properties, you can anytime uh, bring it back up, properties. And then I can adjust the exposure to something else. So not only can I turn the effect on and off, I can also uh, change the effect uh, parameters here. Uh, and I can also change the opacity of the, expo of, the, of the layer. So for example, if I turn it to 50% opacity, uh, it doesn't change anything. It does, okay. When I go all the way down, so here it is, 50%. So that means whatever I changed here will only take effect 50% of it, or if I bring it back to 100, it's 100%. So, but in this case, I would rather change the parameters of the exposure than changing the opacity. But for some other, uh, op uh, some other adjustment layers, that might be the case. Okay. So you can we can add an adjustment layer. We can define if it's influencing only one layer below or all layers below with this button here, and we can anytime change the parameters in our course. And now here's the most important thing. Uh, we can also mask it. And if you haven't uh, heard and if you haven't used mask, I would, I would um, ask you to watch the video number four. And this is where I explained how to use masks. So how do we use a mask here on our, on our layer? For example, if I want the, the effect that I added, the exposure brightness, uh, if I want it only to be um, in the top part, so not in the bottom part, all I need to do is take the mask, use, for example, a brush, and I'm going to paint in black, and I make the brush just a little bit larger. So, And then I'm going to paint it, uh, paint the bottom black, because wherever it's black, the, expo uh, the, uh, the exposure adjustment layer is not applied to. So let's make it really... Uh, a larger layer, so there it is, and for example, the bottom is not uh, applied to because I just painted it black. So if you look at the mask, and that is Alt, click on the mask, this is what my mask looks like. Everywhere where it's white, it's fully applied. Where it's black, it's um, not applied. And of course, if I, uh, if I paint 50% gray, for example, uh, by usually I do it by changing the opacity of the paint to to 50%. Then it's only partly applied. So let's try this. Uh, so here is before and after. So that is the original layer, and that is the adjustment to the top more than to bottom. To the bottom. If I need and I'm going to again use an alt click on the mask. If I want a mask like this to go from black to white, that's what's called a gradient. So I'm going to have a gradient going from black to white. Of course, I don't have to paint it by hand. There is an, a, a ready-made a gradient tool that allows me to go from black to white. And I could just start here and I paint a really continuous gradient this way. And now I have the bottom, no effect, and the top, the most effect. Okay, so adding an adjustment layer, adjusting where where it is uh, where it is affecting, which layer it is affecting, and to to change the uh, the to, to the, the, the areas in which the, this adjustment layer is applied to by using a mask uh, by masking the layer. Okay, so let me remove the, uh, the adjustment layer quickly and let's have a look through some of the most, um, most common adjustment layers. And my personal favorite is not the, is not the um, exposure. I'm going to show you why. Um, if you, uh, oops, sorry. If you ever try to make an image slightly brighter or slightly darker, you will find that both brightness and contrast and exposure, in my case, are not really suitable because. So I'll try to show you uh, here. For example, here is an area that is already very, very white. Also, some parts of the 
of the egg carton and um, some of the highlights are pretty white already. If I now take my exposure and I make it brighter, you will see right away that those white areas, they will totally turn white and they almost bleeding out white here. Here's the same thing. So the white kind of bleeds out. It's called a clamping. So towards the, the brightest areas of the picture, they just hit the roof. They just hit the white and they stay white. So they kind of lose all the color information while I have to go up so that all the other things uh, brighten up. The same thing with the dark areas. If I already have some areas that are pretty dark, like here, for example, and maybe in the shadows of the darker eggs, if I now make it darker, you will see that those black areas will soon be, oh, that's too much, that soon be totally black. So that's why when I want to make a picture slightly brighter or slightly darker, I'm not using exposure. What I'm using is, a curve and you add a curve to your picture. So what is a curve? The curve is, and you can see here, that's called a histogram uh, that looks like a mountain range and those mountain range, those mountain range show you the pixels, the pixels sorted by their brightness. So on the left side, and you can see the bottom, uh, here's the white to black. So on the left side, you have all the darkest pixels and you can see that the mountain starts and will reach up quite uh, quite rapidly and then it slowly goes down. So we will have, we have a lot of dark pixels down here, but not really totally blacks, so maybe a few totally black pixels over here, but then you have a lot of dark pixels, then we have uh, almost no mid-range pix uh, pixels, but here towards the end we have some really bright ones, and that's you know the area here, and those are the highlights on the eggs. So sorted by their brightness. And now what does the effect do? If you right now have the current state on the horizontal line, you have the target state or the future state on the left side here and we have a 45 degree angle line here so that means every pixel right now if you take the one here at 50 percent and that this one pixel will go up with the effect till it hits the line and then go left so whatever is 50 percent before will end up being 50 percent after the effect because i haven't changed anything yet so a typical uh, effect to make a picture brighter would be to make add one point here in the middle and drag so you have a little a little belly here so now a, a pixel that was 50 percent before will go up go up go up go up till it hits the line and then go left and you will see it was 50 percent gray before and now it is brighter than before but the totally dark pixels and the totally white pixels have been affected less than the ones in the middle. So you're basically you are brightening or darkening only the middle range. And this can not only be done with one pixel, for example, but you can also do it. I'm going to do it a little bit extreme. So you brighten up the dark ones and then you add another point and you darken the the bright ones and that will give you a little over more uh, overall more grayish look. How does it look before and after? Here, before and after. So that is basically you adjust the brightness, the brightness change according to how bright or how dark it was before. Of course, you can go to all kinds of extremes. You can also take the really bright ones and do something. Let's, if you want to remove a point, just pull it outside of the range. So you can take this and that will clamp. That will like make all the bright pixels totally white or on this side all the dark pixels will go totally dark and so on uh, that's let's get rid of this point let's get rid of this point there's another point so let's make it somehow so this was a, was a, this was that's what it was before so uh, making a picture slightly darker or slightly brighter or more contrasty that would be an s curve or less contrasty the opposite s curve okay so that is how how uh, curves can adjust your image let's just and of course you can still um, 
mask it. If some areas needs less of the effect and some more, you can mask it with, with a gradient or with painting on it. So that is a good, a good adjustment for making images brighter or, or, or darker. Another adjustment uh, that you might want to use, for example, would be hue, saturation, and value. So when you go to hue, saturation, and value, it has also three parameters. The U, uh, the U is kind of the which in which range the color is. The saturation is how much color of everything, and the lightness, of course, with which the bright colors and the dark colors. Uh, do not touch the lightness here because it does the same thing as before. It kind of takes all the pixels and moves them towards brighter. That, of course, means that the ones that are already quite bright, they will soon be totally white and it will you lose all the contrast. Also, going down is the same thing. You will easily uh, clamp some color information by going out here. So I wouldn't do that, but what I'm using U saturation and value before is uh, changing the saturation. So if I want to take away some of the color or I want to add some of the color, I maybe use uh, U and saturation. Also, you can switch colors. So when I change the U, uh, you can see that the colors uh, changes in a certain direction. Also you can use uh, colorize but then you get a duotone image and you will kind of colorize it in a certain way. But we will take a look at that more when we talk about colors and changing colors of objects and so on. So then that's when we use the hue and saturation adjustment layer. But for right now the saturation is something that I like to use here. Also uh, when you take a look at vibrance, vibrance also has a saturation uh, adjust adjustment. So this is if I want to just change the the saturation, I might also use vibrance. Uh, what is the vibrance uh, the vibrance setting? Uh, it is kind kind of like you would could call it a color contrast. So it kind of uh, a contrast between colors, uh, and it gives when when it's increased, it gives the, the it, it makes the colors pop much more. So let's increase the uh, brightness here and watch before and after. So here's the effect. It makes some of the colors pop pop out. So before, let me take that to zero. Oh, by the way, uh, when you have a value and you want to bring it back to zero, you can also uh, uh, type in uh, zero over here. Sometimes it's faster. Okay, so here's before and after. So that is bringing some of the colors uh, up with vibrance. You lose a bit of the, of the white highlights, but still you get a little bit better colors uh, in vibrance. So let's take that away as well. What else do we have? Um, well, of some of the most important, so, but curves is really good, vibrance, use saturation. Um, yeah, those are the most important. Try all of them. Something, some do a little different, so the solid color gradient and so on, we, can, we use them for something else. But the, the typical changes here are the ones that you can apply and try out what they are. Okay, so uh, let's do repeat it quickly. Adjustment layers, we know how to create them, we know how to modify them, modify the parameters of the, of the adjustment layers. We can adjust if it's just um, applied to one layer below or all of them and we also know how we can use adjustment layers together with masks in order to apply the effect not everywhere on the picture. Okay, that was working with adjustment layers. Um, I'll see you in the next video.